President-elect Trump, my friend, congratulations on being elected President of the United States of America. You are a great friend of Israel. Over the years, you've expressed your support consistently, and I deeply appreciate it. I look forward to working with you to advance security, prosperity, and peace. Israel is grateful for the broad support it enjoys among the American people, and I'm confident the two of us, working closely together, will bring the great alliance between our two countries to even greater heights. All right, ladies and gentlemen, of course, the Prime Minister of Israel, Bibi Netanyahu, and joining me now, Mort Klein, President of the Zionist Organization of America, also known as ZOA. Great to see you, my friend. Steve, it's good to be with you again. You know, uh, as an American, naturally, I, I, I'm, I'm obsessed and concerned with uh, um, what the Supreme Court would have looked like under Hillary, uh, what this country would have looked like under Hillary in so many respects. But as a, as a Jewish American, I'm also concerned also with the, the, the safety and well-being and success of Israel. And what a contrast, uh, and I'd love to hear your view on this, I know you've written about it, what a contrast uh, Hillary would have been for Israel as compared to what Donald Trump will be for Israel, in my view. <laughs> Well, Hillary, uh, uh, I know from the inside, uh, would be interested in pressuring Israel and blaming Israel for the fact that the, the Arabs refuse to make peace. <laughs> uh, she would want to establish a Palestinian state immediately. Uh, and everyone knows this would be a racist, terrorist state promoting hatred and violence against Jews and others uh, in, in the Middle East. She would also uh, take the racist, anti-Semitic position of saying Jews cannot build in Eastern Jerusalem or Judea and Samaria while Arabs can. Uh, what a contrast from uh, Donald Trump, <laughs> who in his uh, policy paper on, on, on Israel, which happened to be the most pro-Israel policy statement in history, <laughs> he opposes establishing a Palestinian state. He says because this will be a terrorist state, they promote hatred and violence in their schools, in their media, in their speeches. They name schools and streets and sports teams after Jew-killing terrorists, <laughs> and he gives pensions. Not many of your listeners know this. He pays pensions to the families of suicide bombers. You're and talking then, about Abbas <laughs> and the Palestinian Abbas, government. Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian yeah. government, yeah. gives pensions to the, to the families of, of suicide bombers, yeah. who, and the more Jews they murder, the higher, higher the, the pension. pension. Can you believe this? And, it is And Donald shocking. Trump has come such a long way since that first disturbing <laughs> statement where he, I don't want to take sides, I don't want to tip my hat, I want to go in there and negotiate. But he's been, he's, he's not a politician. He loves Israel. He thought, but he's been educated in all the things you've just said. You don't hear from administrations. You hear it from people like me and you, but now to hear it from Donald Trump in his paper, that's, that's very encouraging. And, and unlike Hillary and, uh, and uh, President Obama, he openly has said that uh, Jews living and building in Eastern Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria are not an obstacle of peace. And you know, only 2% of the West Bank is, is where the Jews live there. And they've only built within the boundaries that existed 20 years ago. There's no new settlements. He understands this, and he's uh, uh, said this many times. This is disputed territory. This has never been sovereign Arab territory. Right. There's never been a Palestinian state in Judea and Samaria. Right. Jordan illegally occupied it right. from 48 to 67. The UN never well, recognized it. Uh, of course, it. When, you, when you talk to people and they say, give the land back, they, they, gave, they, they took the land from Jordan and Egypt mm -hmm. and Syria. They didn't take it from a Palestinian <laughs> state. But that exactly aside, right. uh, exactly so, right. so let's talk about uh, Donald Trump. One of the things he said he would do, and I already saw that, um, <laughs> that uh, the, uh, the, Ar the, the Abbas and the Palestinian leadership is saying he won't, uh, is that he will move the U.S. Embassy <laughs> finally, uh, as required by law, uh, although it, there's an out for every, every president, and they've all taken it, move the embassy to Jerusalem. Do you believe he will do that? Well, you know, we've had President Clinton promise that, yeah, George Bush. Bush promised that. He promised that to me personally, by the way, when he was running in a private meeting I had with him. <laughs> and, uh, Which one, uh, uh, Clinton and, and Bush, or just uh, Bush? Bush, I had okay. a private meeting yeah. with him, <laughs> and he publicly announced it, of course. <laughs> His advisors, who are friends of mine, tell me that he will really move the embassy to, to, to Jerusalem. By the way, the land for the embassy is actually in the western part of Jerusalem. Yeah. It's not even in any no, area that's disputed. even under, yeah. di under yeah. discussion. And uh, <laughs> Israel has their parliament, uh, uh, all of their government offices in Jerusalem. This is the capital. Let me tell you something else. <laughs> Jerusalem is not holy to Muslims. This is a propaganda lie. The, the Jewish uh, holy texts mention Jerusalem 700 times. 
the Koran, the Islamic holy text, never mentions Jerusalem a single time. If it's so holy to them, why does their holiest book never mention Jerusalem? And why from 48 to 67, 1947, when they controlled all of Eastern Jerusalem, why did they allow it to become a slum? Uh, uh, there was virtually no running water, no electricity, no plumbing. They destroyed the 58 synagogues, sure. and they made the, their capital, Jordan did, in Amman, not right, in Jerusalem. Not, not Jerusalem. <laughs> no, it, it, there's so many fallacies, of course, and the rewrite of the UN rewriting history, saying <laughs> some of Jew, the Jewish people's most holy sites have nothing to do with Judaism. Uh, but so, so, which brings That's me. That's another thing that Trump said. He said, if the UN continues to promote these lies against Israel and bigotry against Israel, like Jerusalem is not holy to Jews, he's going to cut funds to the UN. Yeah. He's taken that position publicly. Now, do you? think uh, it, 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 it's encouraging or it doesn't make much of a difference that he has a Jewish son-in-law, a Jewish daughter, and Jewish grandchildren? I, don't, I, I think his positions are based on what he believes is right for America and, and for the, uh, the strong allies of Israel. Because he was a supporter of Israel and, and led the Israel Day Parade long before he, his, his daughter before converted and married, I believe. Right. Yeah. I, uh, I, I frankly don't think that that's a, an important position. After all, Hillary's uh, son-in-law is Jewish, uh, is Jewish yeah. and her positions on Israel yeah. are far less supportive. Let me ask you about uh, <laughs> something that's very troubling to think of. Um, Barack Obama, I mean, he has an agenda between now and the end of his term. There's been all kinds of predictions of executive orders and, and prisoners release and closing Gitmo and releasing all the prisoners, whatever, uh, unilaterally. Um, we saw at the UN a, a couple of weeks ago for the first time the Security Council voted to denounce the U.S.-Cuban embargo, the economic embargo, and we did not veto that resolution. We sat there like fools and said, oh, okay. Um, at the Security Council, many people fear, coming up between the next month and a half, the, the uh, Security Council will pass a Palestinian state, declare a Palestinian state, and the U.S. will not veto it, or maybe even worse, or the same thing, go along with it. And that'll be Obama's parting shot at Netanyahu. Do you fear that? Uh, I and many others fear it. We took out full-page ads in the New York Times yeah, and that. elsewhere, uh, worrying about this. Uh, uh, and one of the reasons we worry about this is that the New York, the New York Times themselves have come out with a resolution uh, pleading with Obama to establish a state unilaterally and not to veto such a resolution. Uh, the New York Times frequently takes their uh, orders from the White House. Uh, and I think... Uh, uh, the fact that when President Obama has been asked, will he veto such a, a resolution establishing a Palestinian Arab terrorist state uh, in the heartland of, of Israel, he's refused to respond to it. When I asked Samantha Power, the, uh, <laughs> the uh, ambassador of the United States to the UN about this issue, she said, well, we're not familiar with such an issue. She wouldn't answer the question. Uh, so we're very w worried about this. This will end the prospects for peace. Uh, and uh, all you're going to have, if this happens, God forbid, you'll have a Hamas that's a terrorist group, yeah. Iran state, they'll be controlling the state, they'll be bringing in heavy weapons, uh, and there'll be terrorism like you never saw before. Let's talk about the Iran deal. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it's very possible, I believe, well, I don't know exactly what he could do. You probably are expert uh, in this more than I. What can Donald Trump do with the Republican uh, Senate and House to, you know, because we see flagrant violations of this deal by Iran over and over and over again, not to mention the incitement, which is separate. Can, can based on those violations or perceived violations, can Donald Trump Get us out of that deal. <laughs> this very morning, the IAEA, International Atomic Energy Association, uh, this very morning announced that Iran is violating again uh, uh, the, the terms of those numbers. They're, they're, they're bringing in more nuclear type equipment to, for a nuclear bomb against the deal. <laughs> uh, pre uh, uh, President elect Trump has said he will, uh, he will establish new sanctions, increase sanctions if this continues, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and that he will. Uh, uh, if necessary, if this continues, he said he will make it clear to them that we'll use any means possible to make sure you do not get nuclear weapons. That means even threatening militarily. All you need is the threat of military action, and this will scare the, uh, the heck out of the, yeah. the Iranians, because yeah. uh, they'll believe and understand that he means it, and 
he will allow Israel to do what they deem appropriate militarily, so Iran will no longer have, have the protections they had before. So he can scare them into finally maybe complying with this deal. Like, like I said, <laughs> like, like I started, what a difference uh, if you were sitting here and we were talking about a Hillary Clinton administration uh, in the offing as opposed to... Uh, wait, 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 let me, let me yeah. just say, because this is not a treaty, only an agreement, right. He can uh, t tell Iran we're going to change the terms of it so you can never end up with nuclear weapons because this deal allows them to get nuclear weapons in 10 to 15 years. Mort Klein, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, ZOA, uh, the website I assume is ZOA.com? .org. .org. ZOA.org. Check it out. They do such great work uh, supporting the state of Israel. Thank you, my friend. Good Thank to see you. See. All right, ladies and gentlemen, up next, we're going to talk to our friend, legendary singer Pat Boone. Uh, I'm sure he's a happy, uh, Mort's, Mort's happy about that, uh, about the overwhelming evangelical support for President-elect Donald Trump. Uh, and, and, and of course, uh, the anti-Trump left's violence in cities uh, last night, and they're promising much, much more. I wish I could have talked about with Mort the overwhelming Jewish support for Donald Trump at the polls, but of course, uh, that doesn't happen to Republicans. Don't go away, folks.